recording is starting. There we go. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to meet with us. Uh, this is the second meeting of the stakeholder committee for the 179th Street Access Management and Circulation Plan. Um, we'll go through our agenda uh, shortly. I will um, uh, put it up on the screen and uh, we can move forward. There are uh, some new folks joining us uh, today that weren't in, weren't, uh, in attendance last meeting. So we'll do a round of introductions, starting with uh, the project team and then on to the stakeholders. So uh, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Matt Herman. I'm a long range transportation planner with Clark County Public Works, and I'm the project manager uh, from the county for for this project. Um, we'll move on to our consultants uh, with Rhea. Hi, I'm Rhea Fuskowski with DKS Associates. I'm a senior transportation engineer and I'm the project manager for the consultant team for this. So thanks for coming today. Excellent. Uh, Amanda. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Deering. I also work at DKS Associates. Um, I'm a transportation engineer helping out Rhea with this project. Thank you. And Chuck? I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Chuck Green with OTAC, and uh, we're helping with some of the engineering uh, uh, conceptualization of, um, of our access and circulation plan. And we're also uh, the ones putting together that interactive map that uh, hopefully you've had a chance to peruse. Uh, David Gilroy? Can you hear us? See us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so I'm David Gilroy. I was part of the uh, Mill Creek uh, sub area planning process a while back. Thank you. Uh, David Betts. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, manager of construction design with Clark Public Utilities. Thank you. That's John. <laughs> Uh, Dennis Johnson. Yeah, I'm Dennis. Uh, I'm a citizen and an interested stakeholder in the process. And will do my best to offer what I consider to be a useful help. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Eric Galimo. Hi, Eric Galimo, SGA Engineering. Uh, we just have some projects in the area that we provide uh, engineering and land use planning on. Great. Thank you. Uh, Gary Albrecht from Clark County just joined us. Gary Albrecht, Clark County Transportation Planner, Long Range Planner. Thank you, Gary. Uh, John Piling. Uh, John, you're muted. Sorry. John Pilling with Clark Public Utilities on the electric side, uh, Associate Design Engineer that uh, designs most of the agency road improvement project work uh, for. CPU. Uh, thank you. Uh, Justin Rent. Justin Rent with uh, Clark Public Utilities. I um, handle most of the subdivision designs and frontage work. And I know there's lots of subdivisions going on out in this area. So I'd like to sit in and see what the plan is. Great. Thank you. Uh, Les McDonald. Good afternoon. I'm Les McDonald with Clark Regional Wastewater District. I'm a development program manager and I oversee the um, submittal of application and approval of development projects within the district. Thank you, Les. Uh, we also had some uh, folks that might be joining us on the phone. Uh, if I haven't announced your name. Okay. Um, so I think we got everyone in attendance. Um, I was looking forward. I, Bridget Schwartz from the Fairgrounds Neighborhood Association was invited and said that she was coming. Um, so hopefully we'll see her face here shortly um, and go from there. Um, so why don't I pull up my 
presentation. So uh, today we're going to um, do the introductions, which we uh, just did. We're going to review the street classifications and the specifics regarding uh, our, our classifications um, so that we can go through this map and um, keep you well informed as we move through it. Uh, we're also going to review the comprehensive plan circulation policies. And then the majority of our conversation is going to be um, around the alternatives. We really want your feedback on the alternatives, um, what you see as viable, what you don't, know, what you think the uh, county should be looking at, um, and um, are we missing the mark or are we are we coming in on uh, what your expectations are? Um, so. I'll move forward with this uh, presentation. This presentation was uh, emailed out to you prior to this meeting. The, most of our conversation will be um, on the interactive project website, but this, uh, uh, the maps that are um, near the back of this presentation are really to give, to show you um, in an easy uh, to read method, the before and after of the project. What's currently planned and uh, what our alternatives are, are looking at. Um, so um, you can refer to that for guidance, but again, most of the conversation is going to be on the interactive map website. Um, so just a quick review on our schedule. Uh, we met last month, we went over the existing conditions and the plan improvements. Uh, October this month, this meeting is um, really a bulk of what we're hoping to get feedback from you on. It's all our alternative discussion. And then we'll return uh, hopefully in November. Hopefully the um, holiday season doesn't kick us out to December, but hopefully we can have a meeting and review the recommendations uh, from this group to move forward um, to planning commission, Development Engineering Advisory Board, as well as uh, ultimate adoption through County Council. So the reason why we're going through an access management and circulation plan for this area is uh, has to do a lot with the geography of the area. As you know, there is some significant cuts and fills that are required to improve 179th Street to its ultimate design. And those cuts and fills really uh, provide uh, um, safety issues when it comes down to uh, future access on and off 179th Street. We want to be able to promote uh, safety and mobility in this corridor all the way from 11th at Northwest 11th Avenue to uh, Northeast 50th Avenue at its eastern terminus. Um, uh, but we really want to both address um, uh, safety and mobility, but also balance that with the infrastructure needs for uh, developments as they move forward with the uh, project permitting. So the reason why we formed a stakeholders committee is uh, to give have you give us some guidance um, on and insight and considerations for promoting those goals, those safety and mobility goals on this principal arterial um, and making sure that it's uh, a corridor that responds to um, the public rather than the public responding to it. So um, we are guided by specific goals and policies in our comprehensive plan. Um, that give us the guidance to move forward with this planning process. Uh, first and foremost, the goal is to optimize and preserve the investment in the transportation system. As you know, there's a significant amount of investment um, coming down the line on this corridor, uh, both with the DOT's project of the interchange reconstruction, as well as uh, local improvements completed by Clark County. 
We want to ensure mobility through the uh, transportation system to make sure that um, um, the street system is efficient as possible um, and uh, provides um, um, uh, transportation for all different modes of transportation, whether it be um, automobile, bike, pedestrians, as well as truck movements. So currently the planning study is includes the Vancouver urban growth area. The eastern uh, boundary of the Vancouver urban growth area is uh, Northeast 50th Avenue on this on 179th Street. And then the westernmost boundary is Northwest 11th Avenue, um, which is uh, west of the fairgrounds. So uh, this corridor um, has been in the urban growth area for Vancouver since 2008, I believe. Um, and it most recently went through um, urban holding removal in the area, so land uh, is able to develop to urban density levels. So this is, uh, these are important charts to keep in mind as we move through interactive math. We have several different um, classifications of streets and they're in a hierarchy far form so that we can um, safely move uh, uh, vehicles from their home on local roads to collectors, to arterials, and um, onto their destinations. Uh, the um, first and foremost, the highest of the hierarchy of streets is the principal arterial, which is uh, four travel lanes, a center turn lane, and bike lanes in each direction. This is the classification of 179th Street all the way from Northwest 11th to Northeast 50th Avenue. Uh, the existing right of way that's necessary for this road is 100 feet. The pavement within that 100 feet is uh, 72 feet. It has a design speed of 50 miles per hour um, uh, and direct access, meaning uh, direct access through driveways is uh, not allowed. Uh, typically, uh, principal arterials exist every uh, two to five miles um, throughout the county in the urban areas. Um, the, uh, um, I think that's just good. Uh, minor arterials um, on the, in this area, in this project, uh, they move north and south. Minor arterials are uh, 29th Avenue, as well as 50th Avenue and Northwest 11th Avenue. Um, 15th Avenue is also a minor arterial, as well as 10th Avenue that um, runs um, adjacent to the fairgrounds north and south. There's two different uh, sections of minor arterials, both the four lane section, that's 100 feet, uh, 72 feet of uh, pavement width, it's a lower design speed than the principal arterial. Um, and it's spaced, uh, all of the collectors and arterials are spaced less than two miles. Our two lane arteri minor arterial is 72 feet in right of way, 48 feet in pavement width, and again has that 40 mile per hour um, design speed. We then have collectors. Our collectors connect our arterials uh, to our local residential streets. And those uh, have, we have three different types of collectors um, in the urban area. Their collectors, all of them have uh, two travel lanes. Um, there's one section that's larger than the other two, that's the 70 foot, uh, foot right away collector. And the reason why that's bigger is because it contains a center turn lane. Uh, has 46 feet of pavement. And then we have collectors with bike lanes and uh, the collector at the bottom there uh, replaces the bike lanes with parking. So um, a lot of times county staff throws out these acronyms, M2CB, 
C2CB, ER4CB, all of those refer to these different street classifications. I'm going to try my hardest to avoid using those acronyms and uh, make sure I'm talking directly to it. Um, but and please, Matt, go ahead. So uh, all these street classifications have sidewalks as well. Yes, thanks for noting that. Yeah, all of urban streets, all urban public streets have uh, sidewalks on both sides. Um, these major roads, again, do not allow direct access onto them. Um, uh, conversely, our local roads do. We have several different types of local roads. Um, in commercial and industrial districts, there's uh, four different types of roads. Commercial industrial roads that um, are local roads, um, commercial industrial with bike lanes, commercial industrial with parking, and then commercial industrial with storefronts. Um, a large part of those uh, act, um, neighborhoods are connected to the collector system through neighborhood circulators. These are 54 feet um, in right away width, 36 foot of uh, pavement, um, and do have direct access for driveways. And then uh, we have the local residential access roads. Again, these are smaller in right away and in pavement. Um, they're your typical um, um, uh, neighborhood street, and um, it's uh, what you're you greet your neighbors on. So, with that said, uh, we're going to be moving on to our interactive project website. And within this uh, PowerPoint presentation, these links that you find are interactive. So you can click on this and it will take you directly to the project website. Which I think I need to close this. Share my screen. So this is the uh, interactive project website. And the reason why we're saying interactive is because there's several different layers that you can click on and click off and see things um, um, that aren't necessarily on here. You have layer lists um, that have a variety of information uh, for our utility providers. There's uh, sewer lines, uh, storm lines, water lines, um, as well as uh, critical area um, information um, and uh, contours, parks. So you can go through and you can click on and off these um, and uh, gain some more insight if you uh, need to find a, a layer uh, that's not automatically on the map. So uh, with that said, um, we're going to go into our our alternatives discussion. Um, when we go through this map, you're going to see a variety of different things. I will turn on the legend so that it is clear. Um, but uh, what you're seeing is if it's a solid line, it's currently in our arterial atlas. And as you recall from the previous meeting, our arterial atlas is our long range circulation plan for uh, future streets. So for instance, this uh, pink line, which is a collector, is currently in the arterial atlas. Our alternatives that uh, we are forecasting are shown as dash lines. Um, uh, deep purple uh, is a minor arterial. A pink is an urban collector. Uh, olive color is uh, neighborhood circulators. And then local stubs uh, are shown as blue hatched lines. Um, and then along with the street segments, there's different symbols that are shown for uh, the intersection types. We have roundabouts that are shown with a, a, a circle. 
uh, right in, right out, uh, meaning no left turn access is shown as a square. Um, interim access. So interim means that uh, a road network outside of 179th doesn't exist. So they're currently accessing 179th, but uh, may be required to close that once the local road network connects the development to the, the site. Um, and then there's uh, interim access. So that is, uh, again, a, a triangle or a diamond. It's not a triangle, it's a diamond. Uh, that only has a uh, future emergency access. So future emergency access would be served by fire or uh, the sheriff's office. So we're going to start by going uh, from the western edge of the urban growth area, which is our project boundary um, toward the interchange and then uh, pick up and go from uh, the interchange onto the east. So um, I apologize this. Uh, Matt, um, you, Matt, you might want to click off the um, yeah, the creek and, and the, the, they sometimes float till you refresh the map. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, from the Northwest 11th Avenue, we have a current development that has received preliminary plat approval, and that's the North Haven subdivision that's located uh, on the uh, south, what is it, eastern quadrant of the um, intersection. Currently, Northwest 11th um, is stop controlled, um, but we are forecasting the need for a future roundabout at that location. Um, and then uh, connecting the next uh, roundabout will be at the, that we're um, put out there is uh, access onto um, right by the uh, public safety uh, service, the, the sheriff's office that goes on to the um, amphitheater. Uh, we are um, uh, have an alternative for neighborhood circulators to both uh, go north, south and east, west, and those are aligned with the property lines um, by some very large parcels right now. Um, we're also showing um, the we're trying as as hard as possible to avoid uh, wetland impacts. So you'll see uh, a serpentine um, uh, alignment for this uh, neighborhood circulator that tries to avoid uh, direct access with the um, uh, wetland shown here um, and uh, ultimately connect to um, the future collector. And then uh, we're showing local stubs that come off of that. Uh, moving uh, eastbound, um, we have that future collector that's currently in the arterial atlas with the amphitheater access. One of the considerations that we wanted to have on this was, uh, as you know, event traffic plays a huge role on this corridor from the amphitheater access to the interchange. And when a, a event starts, they uh, change the lane configuration to be three lanes inbound, one lane outbound, and then they reverse that when the event's over so that it's three lanes outbound and one lane inbound. And that plays a huge role with roundabout and the roundabout design. 
Um, obviously, the roundabout design has to function with that different type of uh, configuration. Um, so um, we wanted to make sure that that's addressed when we uh, propose this alternative. Uh, another roundabout with uh, neighborhood circulator access that we proposed is uh, access to the fairgrounds. This is at approximately Northeast 2nd Avenue um, that connects the fairgrounds to the site. And then um, with um, uh, right in, right out access at the neighborhood circulator here. So I know that um, this is going fast, but what it means for like a, a right in, right out access would be if a um, vehicle is traveling south and wants to go toward uh, the interchange, they would have to take a left turn. With a right in, right out access, the way that they would do that is um, taking a right going around the roundabout and then on to the interchange. Or using the neighborhood circulator through local roads or using the collector through local roads and then uh, using it to go um, toward the interchange. So this is our first section. Um, I'm happy to hear thoughts on uh, what you think? And you think we're on the right track? Or not? What are the advantages of the right in and right out? Uh, why are you proposing those? I'm, just, I'm not yeah. expert enough to know, figured out. Sure. So the right in, right out helps uh, the mobility on uh, 179th. Um, a lot of the uh, safety and collisions that occur occur at intersections, um, especially uh, stop controlled intersections. There are collisions at roundabouts, but they are less severe than uh, full access intersections. So the right in right out uh, helps uh, preserve the mobility of the corridor because um, um, vehicles um, uh, are not delayed by turning movements. Um, especially left turns, and, um, and it's a safety component as well. OK. Matt, the other thing that we might want to point out is why they're seeing these dashed lines on property lines. Yeah, um, which which is to we don't know how I mean, these are all capable of being uh, developed into urban uh, style developments and densities. What we don't know is how developers would would develop them out um, or piece together parcels or aggregate parcels to do that. So what we're proposing in this is um, kind of sharing the responsibility for these circulators between adjacent uh, development so that it's not putting all of the pressure of the cost of building a development on one developer. It's actually being shared responsibility between um, a variety of developers, uh, whoever would develop these in the area. And uh, it's also, thank you, Chuck. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting is we did put those local stubs um, because we we don't have the authority, nor do we want to plan individual developments on how those local streets uh, connect to each other. And can I and I want to add so the the right and right outs would so that one seventy ninth is a principal arterial, so it's the biggest classification, so it could handle up to twenty four thousand vehicles per day. <clears throat> So having the right in right outs can help help with that congestion, managing the congestion and the safety components of it. Any additional 
um, remarks. Okay. Uh, we can move on to the east of the interchange and the interchange itself, itself I guess. So uh, Delphel Road as part of the interchange reconstruction is going to get realigned uh, instead of going on the uh, east side of the Chevron station, it will be uh, connected on the west side uh, directly to Delphel Road so that we have um, a four way intersection and that will also be a roundabout. The reason why again it's a roundabout is um, uh, so that traffic continues to move. Um, and uh, they're not waiting on the signal to turn, uh, which could back up um, traffic onto the inner, inner uh, state. Uh, currently, the design for the uh, interchange reconstruction is a series of roundabouts, um, both connecting um, uh, the on and off ramps to the interstate. One of the uh, things that will be changed uh, is significant on the um, east side of the interchange, and that is 10th Avenue that currently goes from the northbound off ramp. Uh, if you continue to travel, it turns into North uh, East 10th Avenue. That will be uh, um, uh, disconnected from 179th Street. Um, because uh, of the close location, it has some um, maneuverability issues associated with um, the, the signal. So Northeast 10th Avenue will be disconnected as well as uh, Union Road. Um, so uh, for folks that want to go north on 10th Avenue, uh, there'll be a series of roundabouts, one at approximately 12th Avenue and then uh, Northeast 50th Ave 15th Avenue, excuse me. And that will um, go through um, uh, the topographic and um, uh, stream and connect onto 10th Avenue toward the north. Matt, you might want to click on the uh, Mill Creek PUD and it'll show why um, the lines are the new roadway alignments are showing up as uh, as they are depicted on the map. OK, thank you. So here's and uh, please keep in mind that this is uh, Three Creeks uh, subdivision or, or site plan that has not been approved um, yet. So it is purely a conceptual plan. Uh, the county and the developer are in uh, constant um, communication and coordination with the alignment of the future 15th Avenue extension. Uh, they are proposing, um, they would like to develop, I should say, um, apartments on the north side of 179th Street and a commercial center on the south side of 179th Street. Um, this here is showing a northbound access. Um, but uh, we don't think that will happen, and I don't. And the developer is not proposing it um, because of the uh, stream crossing, as well as significant grades that happen right after the stream. So it would be a roundabout with uh, east and west and south access, no north access. Is there any problems with circulation? Do they in because it's on the map, or it's not a designated north-south circ or a circulation route? Right. No, it's not. It's not designated north-south. It's not on the arterial atlas. This is something that the developer um, during negotiations wanted in order to have um, uh, commercial access directly off of the interchange. And there's a there's a culvert that 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 would need to get built. So that's that's part of that. 